Good afternoon. This is going to be a second Twin Flame reading this week. Um, I know that I just did one, but so much has happened for me this week where I have gained so much clarity and um, I have achieved inner spiritual union um, with my own soul. Um, and I, I am going to try to find words to describe it to you and incorporate it into this reading but since I have had more information come up as far as downloads of knowledge um, that I wanted to be able to share first of all um, this has been kind of a rough energetic shift for me uh, ascension is not without physical pain um, I have had extreme pain in my body now for about five days um, just from the energy um, of basically trying to maintain a higher vibration um, my body's trying to adjust to it um, I literally have like um, shorted out the lighting in the bathroom <laughs> I have been completely exhausted this um, took a whole lot out of me physically um, and like I said I'm still dealing with um, trying to get used to this higher vibration so if you will bear with me um, I'm going to try to share some of what I've learned and put it into um, words a human language so that you guys can understand um, basically what this journey is all about and I will say that if you have not watched my twin flame videos before you need to watch them like go back to the first one um, because they do kind of build on themselves and I don't do twin flame readings like everyone else does because I don't focus on romance at all or what your other partner is doing period I don't focus on what they're doing saying feeling thinking or not doing or any of that because all that's irrelevant um, I am a higher vibrational reader so if you're coming here to find out what you know your uh, twin flame divine partner is doing with her karmic or when they're coming home or anything like that you're this is not the video for you I will say that right now not unless you know you're being divinely guided to watch it and maybe you get something out of it that you know gives you that aha moment um, so with that being said I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, we have the Queen of Swords and I love this card because this to me um, epitome uh, I can't basically um, this card here I can't think of the word I was trying to use epitomizes <laughs> um, sums up the entire energy that we have when we are um, so conflicted and so tied into um, whatever our divine partner is doing our twin flame is doing and this is the energy right here this queen of swords because we're so worried about it we're obsessed about it we think about it 24 7 it becomes an addiction it takes over our lives it takes over all areas of our lives um you know i know there's people that just literally just sit up on social media all day long sharing readings and memes and talking about their twin flame all day long in groups and stuff and this is doing more harm than good because when you focus on the physical form of your twin flame that is what makes them leave that is what pushes them away and I'm gonna get into why here in a few minutes um, because like I said I have had much clarity lately um, so basically the message that's coming through from spirit is to fall back this is not a romance this is not a regular relationship if you are wanting to have a normal and I'm using air quotes right now physical 3d relationship to where you have um, all of the fear-based requirements and rules and expectations and you know that whole uh, toxicity and codependency and all that type of shit you're not going to have that with the twin flame so understand that what you are chasing after does not exist with your twin flame you will have to be with somebody anybody other than them because that is not what they're here for they're here to show you everything that you've ever been everything that you've ever been they're here to um 
help you strip off that conditioning and those expectations and that fear-based energy that you took on, that belief in separation and the duality um, that you took on from the moment you incarnated into the physical form that you're in right now, the minute that you came out of the womb, you started taking these things on. And as you started taking these on, you had more and more soul amnesia because you forgot who you were. And you forgot um, that most of the people that you are dealing with that are involved in these different demos or simulations that you're having right now, because we are divine beings having human experiences that we simulate. We simulate these by what we believe to be true. That is how we attract the situations. That is how you are interacting on a physical level with your twin flame is by your own mind, your own creations that you're creating in this energy here, this queen of swords. And they are reflecting it back to you. They're showing it to you. Look back at how in the beginning it was so perfect. And you're like, man, this is like the person I've always been meaning to be with. And where have they been my whole life? And I finally found them and it's perfect. And then all of the fears kick in and all of your insecurities kick in. And I know they're like all the others and this is too good to be true. Or you might see some little fucked up shit that they done posted or somebody commented in the comment section of their uh, social media page. And you're like, what the hell? I thought this was it. And obviously this is just like all the other relationships I've had. And you'll really start to to really face those things um, and so all the people that are playing these different roles in this like play that you're watching that you are creating are soul family and soul family are um, their souls that have traveled the different dimensions and different timelines with you and in one particular um, like in this timeline here they could be a lover in um, past timelines that could have been a mother father sister brother and you have a very close soul resonance with them. You're very close to, you know, being the same energy. And you can tell that you're soul family, but they're not the same energy as you as your twin flame is. Your twin flame is the exact same energy as you. We have the Knight of Pentacles. And so basically, I feel like with this card, that is that whole energy of... Everything that you are aligning to by your thoughts is showing up in your physical reality because the pinnacles are all about a physical reality. Now understand, and people used to say this to me and I'd be like, how in the hell can the 3D be the illusions on a twin flame journey? They would tell me, you've got to see past the illusions. What is happening is not real. And I'm like, well, it sure seems real. But understand, it's all happening in your imagination. And I had said something in the Twin Flame video that I had done earlier this week about how your energy is controlling both ends, yours and the physical form of your Twin Flame. Well, it goes even further than that because I have been, you know, and my spirit guides have given me spiritual insight in small amounts. Because understand, you know, a baby can't digest whole foods yet. So you have to get to that point. So they would just spoon feed me just a little bit at a time, a little bit more, a little bit more, until they were able to show me the whole picture. So that's the reason why I usually say at the beginning of my videos, I had this disclaimer there for a while, that if I ever say something that's contradictory, it's because I have learned otherwise. So I want to apologize in advance because I had said something in one of my Twin Flame videos, I think it was the one before last, where I said that you and your Twin Flame are in the 5D right now orchestrating all of this, orchestrating all of it, making it all happen, right? Well, that's not true. You want to know why it's not true? Because there's only you. There's only you in the 5D orchestrating all of this. Only you. The signs, the synchronicities, the so-called, you know, what other people and other, sorry, my hands hurt. I've been dealing with this pain and I can barely even grip my phone or hold a card because it's physical pain so bad. Um, but people in like spiritual circles or 
or whatever. They talk about runner chaser. Um, they talk about separation. They talk about the, the divine masculine, the divine feminine. These are all duality. They all have to do with duality. So if your reader or your twin flame teacher uses any of these terms whatsoever, run like hell, because that means they themselves have not even learned the whole purpose of this journey. And the whole purpose of this journey is to collapse duality. Duality is seeing separateness. And when you're talking about DM and DF, runner, chaser, separation, that is dealing in duality. That is separation. That is not being in union. So with that being said, um, there's only you. The reason why you have been so obsessed with and crazy about the physical form of your twin flame is because you guys planned it. Because you planned it that way, okay? Not you guys. You planned it that way. Your soul planned it that way. There are two parts to your soul, okay? And they're like batteries. They're two different ends, two different polarities. And you had to experience that in order to understand that duality doesn't exist and that all that there's ever been has been your soul and that you yourself had to balance your energy. But this physical form of the twin flame is one that you're very attracted to because otherwise you never would have started the journey to begin with if you were not attracted to the physical form of your twin flame. To clarify that card, we have compassion for the inner critic. And these are the self-compassion dot um, that I got to kind of incorporate some affirmations and some uh, self-compassion uh, self and self-acceptance into these readings. Pay attention to that self-critical voice within us and all of us. Try saying, I know you criticize me because you are suffering. I want to care for you. Send your self-compassion. So I believe this has to do with self-limiting beliefs. So if you have self-limiting beliefs that basically think about anything you've told yourself, the stories you've told yourself, because if your twin flame is not there with you, it's because you're one, seeing yourselves as separate, and you're not, it's only you. The reason why they tell you to love yourself more and that this journey is a journey of self-love is because there's only you. So once you start loving and accepting yourself more, whatever's happened in your life, whatever type of emotions you're dealing with, love and accept that about yourself and tell yourself, you know what, I'm not going to judge this. I'm going to accept myself exactly how I am and have this compassion for myself. And that is how you transmute these things into love and how you get one step closer to your soul, therefore one step closer to your twin flame. This is an inner journey. You can't do this by normal relationship means. That's why, you know, some of these twin flame teachers kill me. With some of the things that they teach because it sounds like relationship advice okay this is not a relationship this is a relationship with yourself that happens to reflect the inner um, the outer is a reflection of what's going on inside so always remember that it starts within we have the six of cups now the six of cups is all about nostalgia now if you are looking back over how things were when you first met your twin flame and you were wanting to have that back if if what you are thinking is after I do all this work I'm gonna be able to be in a physical relationship with my twin flame and it's going to be beautiful and I'm gonna show all those people who try to keep us apart or whatever kind of stories you're telling yourself because I know I was telling myself that I'm gonna show them all look I got the prize <laughs> And that is coming from a 3D aspect. It's very fear-based. It's being concerned and fearful about what people think and how people view you and um, all of this and all that. But not just that, but you will never have that type of relationship with your twin flame again because it can never be that again because look at all the work you've done. You wouldn't want to go back to that. Would you want to go back to that fear-based codependent energy that you were in before? 
And maybe you're still in that. So maybe, you know, you hear what I'm saying and you can't even imagine what it would be like to not feel this way. Well, it's amazing, I'm telling you. It's taken me a lot of work. I've had to clear through a lot of codependency, a lot of fear of loss, a lot of fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, all kinds of other shit I've had to face to get here. But I'm to the point now, it's whatever. I don't even give a shit anymore. It's whatever. And you know what? I'm completely um, complete and whole on my own. I don't need anything or anybody. You know, he and I, I know, I have a deep sense of knowing. And one of the stories I have playing in the background of my mind is that he and I are going to be together in a physical. And I'm not worried about it. It's not my focus. We have this time. You are trying too hard. Give it time. For one thing, time doesn't exist. There's only energy. So if you are on a time frame, I know I had told myself, look, if we're three years, September will be three years for me. I've been on this twin flame journey. And I told myself, man, if this shit don't come together by September, man, I'm over it. I, that's what I was telling myself for a long time. Well, now that I know that we are always one and I really understand this journey, the more um, closer I align to my soul, the more he's coming in. More and more we're having better interactions and, you know, he's expressing himself to me. And, you know, but it's, it's because I'm not even worried about it anymore. I'm not desperate for it. I'm like, you know, it's whatever. Sometimes he'll message me. I'll look at him and be like, oh, I'll message him back tomorrow. I'm not worried about it. But with this time, um, I know everyone's always saying divine timing or whatnot. It's not about time, it's about energy. This is an energetic journey. This is all about energetic alignment and aligning to um, your soul and to balancing that energy that you have to where there's no longer any fears. You cannot have fears anymore. Um, but with this, you're trying too hard. Yes, this is not something that you have to focus on all the time. Let it go. Focus on some other shit because the more you focus on it, the more you're going to keep it away. Trust me. And this is not about them. This is about you. How do you magnetize the physical form of your twin flame in? By focusing on yourself. That is the key. That and collapsing that duality. Seven of Swords. So basically the energy that I'm getting with this, also with like that Queen of Swords, is that you have felt like you needed to fight battles. You know, and maybe you had like a two or three front battle going on with other people. You know, um, I was, I really felt some kind of way about his karmic partner last year. <laughs> I really did. And then, um... I felt some way about our mutual friends and his family and everybody just was like, fuck Tracy. I'm like, nobody even cares how I feel. I like feel like I'm going to die. Nobody cares. I mean, I really did. I really felt like I was abandoned and left for dead. And so it took me a while to really kind of get past that. And that's the energy I'm getting with this card is you have to be able to see past the illusions. And for one thing, recognize that your soul is doing everything. The physical form of your twin flame is not doing anything at all. You are the same soul. And so whatever they're doing, it's your own soul testing you and preparing you. Imagine them, okay, it's more like they're preparing you and then they're testing you to see if you're prepared. And you have to get to the point where like, you know what, it's like I said, it's whatever. Who cares? Next, where's the next test? You know, and more than that, I don't even give a shit about it one way or another. Because you know what, I'm over here doing my own thing. I feel good. I feel balanced. And I'm not worried about what he's doing anymore. You know, he can literally call me and tell me anything. Okay. Because I recognize it now. And you have to get to that point. And this involves um, really clearing and facing any of your fears that you have. Once you do that, you're no longer scared of loss. You're no longer scared of rejection. You're no longer scared of abandonment. You know your worth. You know you're fucking awesome. 
And, and why would this person not want to be with me physically? Why? I'm amazing. I want to be with me. <laughs> and you know what? And I am. And that's, that is how you need to feel about yourself. How you want them to feel about you, you need to feel that way about yourself. And then they will re reflect it back to you. This is the standstill card. It's actually called the anchor. And I have talked about this before. But when something shows up in your physical reality with the physical form of the twin flame, something shows up and you're like, this is bad. For one thing, get away from labeling things as good as bad, just good or bad. Just be like, okay, you know, this is happening for a reason. What is this showing me? How is this preparing me? How is this testing me? For one thing, it's not real because the physical form of the twin flame, why would he or she ever want to be with anyone else but me? Because I'm fucking amazing. All they want to do is be with me anyway. But my fears and stuff keep projecting. It's like a projector on a screen keep showing themselves to me and things that it looks like they're doing and they're not because it's all in my mind and is my own soul showing me this all that there ever has been has been the physical form of my twin flame standing there waiting to come in to really show me how much that they love me and they want me as much as I want them but my fears won't let them so stop focusing on these things that come up because they're not real and you're anchoring them into your physical world you're anchoring them how do you get them to move by not focusing on them not feeding into them energetically shifting your focus to something else and telling yourself this shit is not real and we have the fool you have to I saw something on Facebook earlier today <laughs> And the person said not to trust anybody. Well, you know what? That's all wrong. Because when you have are in this um, energy of distrust and paranoia and you feel like everybody's out to get you, guess what? That's what you're aligning to. You have to be in a place of deep faith and you have to trust. Because when you trust people, guess what? They're trustworthy. That was one of the first bits of spiritual downloads that came to me when I first started on this journey was trust him and he'll be trustworthy. You have to be in this place of openness and vulnerability and a deep sense of faith and trust because that is what you will attract. You will not attract that paranoia and that victim mentality. So you have to really be almost childlike. And you know how children are so innocent and they're so forgiving and so loving and so resilient. I mean, you can basically, and it's sad, but you basically can do anything to a child and they still will love you. That is the energy that we need to get in and not because, um, With the child, I need to address that because I know it's came up for me before. Like, why would, you know, if we align to different situations, how as a child are we aligning to, like, child abuse and neglect and molestation and stuff like this? Or illness. It's one of two things. For one thing, parents can manifest shit for their kids their deepest fears and their distrust and their paranoia. Second of all, we sign up for these experiences as souls. These were things we wanted to learn about as a human. And so some of us wanted to learn about drug addiction or um, child abuse. Um, I think most of us that are on this journey experienced some shit when we were kids. But let's say you need to return to that childlike innocence before your trust was broken. Homecoming. And this is how you return to your soul. This is how you align to your soul because what did I say? That you were um, in that perfect energy, that perfect love vibration before you incarnated into the body that you were in. And you took on all the conditioning and all the fear-based energy. And so how do you return to your soul? By stripping all that off. 
and by recognizing that you are your soul and you are never separate from your soul ever and that anything else that is not from a loving energy is not soul based that is that conditioning that you took on and you need to strip it away you need to work on peeling away those layers like an onion we have the king of swords so we have the queen and the king of swords so be very mindful and really monitor your thoughts every day as to how many times you obsess about the physical form of your twin flame all day long now i'm going to tell you what i know that you are wanting to have physical union with your twin flame and that is your focus right now but once again, you need to get to the point where you just want to feel better and get rid of that codependency that you have. I had to tell myself, look, I'm so tired of being obsessed about this man. And it takes so much of my energy. And I'm so tired of feeling like he has my power. He has the power to make me happy. He has the power to make me sad. And I got tired of it. I said, you know what? I'm going to take back my own power. And that is the energy that I'm getting with this card. And you cannot lose anything that is yours by divine right. So stop being scared to lose things or people. Because if it's for you, you're never going to lose it. I promise. Because to clarify that card, we have the universe has my back. So the universe knows what you want. And understand, every soul in the universe is connected like a patchwork quilt. And that is the universe, is all of the universal souls. So you are part of the universe. Your soul is. And your soul knows what you want. And soul power and soul energy is the most powerful energy energy in the universe it's more powerful than nuclear power and your soul can make anything happen so you need to surrender to it get out of your own way and stop suffering aren't you tired of suffering we have the sky and so what I'm getting with this is that that is that whole cutting away anything that no longer serves you if it no longer resonates with you, get rid of it. Stop being loyal to people in situations that are not loyal to you. Because the truth be told, I was loyal to so many situations that I should have walked away from. Because you know what? They ended up not even being loyal to me. So do save your energy. And loyalty should be directed to yourself. You should always put yourself first. the moon so and I, I usually don't read these but you know the moon is all about those physical illusions that I was talking about and so don't focus on anything that's going on in the physical I know um, and I have been saying this for like a week but I've gotten to where I save my energy now because everybody is not ready to hear really what they need to do <laughs> they don't I mean they just know what they know and you know they're like I know this and this is where I'm at and you know I don't want to hear anything else and I get to the point where you know um, I'm like well you've got it all figured out then I'm gonna let you go because you've got it all figured out and I'm not gonna offer any more information to you that might be helpful but basically I've been talking a lot about the signs and the synchronicities and when you first start this journey um, the signs and the synchronicities are everywhere well, after a while, they should not excite you anymore because it's your soul speaking to you, letting you know you're on the right path. But this is not a journey about physical shit. This is a journey about spiritual stuff. So once you ascend to a certain degree, those things shouldn't excite you anymore. So stop focusing on the physical stuff and the physical illusions. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Dearest you, miracles never run out. Look back over your life and you will see so many moments of synchronicity when all the right people, the right place, the right opportunities, and the right time just showed up without any of your help. Release the control. Think back to how you felt before a miracle happened. You felt you were giving up, but it was more like a gentle surrender to whatever was about to happen. Wow. 
We want you to know that miracles are being concocted for you, and you will never ever run out of them. You just don't get to choose how they come, who will deliver them, when they will show up, and when they what they will do for you. All of that is our department. Wow, this beautiful card. Spirit knows what is best for you and what wants to be expressed through you. You're incredible and amazing and a magnet for miracles. That would be a good mantra for you today. We're on it. Relax. If you only knew how much you were loved. Sigh. So, it says... You are incredible and amazing and a magnet for miracles. So that needs to be your mantra. And that is beautiful. This is such a beautiful reading. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, personal paid reading, um, it's done via video where we actually video chat. Um, and those are 50 right now. And I can let you know exactly where you're at on your twin flame journey and what you need to work on, what is blocking you. Um, or if you would like to make an energy donation to my channel, I will include both my PayPal and my Cash App information in the description of the video. Um, I might pop up again on you guys. But as I'm getting downloads, I just really feel the need to share them. But what I did want to leave you with is if you cannot resonate with anything else, resonate with the fact that the physical form of the Twin Flame does not matter at all at this point. There's only you, and you are doing everything, all of it. Thanks for watching.